everything else versus Bitcoin essentially gets spent and dies. I want to be able to have reactive security. And I think OpVault is today the most straightforward, easiest to use way to do that. I will not be insulted by a clockmaker. <laughs> Overall, these kind of ways to make the network easier to both build on and interact with, I think is a really big deal. If Bitcoin existed when we started Twitter, we would not have to go down the ad model path. I mean, as simple as that. Integrating Lightning into a social network is the killer app. Hello, and welcome to the Bitcoin.Review podcast, where we explore developments and projects with the people who actually make them happen. The show is supported by Pod 2.0, Sat Streaming, and CoinKite. If you're a new listener, I'm NVK. I run CoinKite, where we've been helping people secure their Bitcoins for over a decade. We make the cold card and fun products like the Block Clock. You can find more information about it on CoinKite.com. Hello, and welcome back to the Nostar Review. Uh, Today, free the nipples episode. Uh, Uncoordinatedly, (laughs) we have everybody without shirts, and it's totally the truth. Not maybe. You figure it out. Just imagine. Picture it. (laughs) <laughs> okay, guys. So uh, today I have uh, Mr. Mr. Will, JB55. Hello, sir. Hello there. Uh, Pablo, welcome back. Hey, nice to be here. And we have uh, a, a first time comer here, Mr. John. What's up? Thanks for having me. The only one wearing a shirt for... <laughs> That's right. <laughs> He's actually wearing a, a, a full three-piece suit. Let's give people imagination, you know, something something <laughs> to uh, work with. Let's not scare them away too quickly. You, you know, it's funny. Uh, uh, from from my camera point of view, it's kind of weird. Do you know that meme where there's like a little girl on a sofa and like, like five big dudes behind her? <laughs> okay, so right now there is, there is uh, uh, me shirtless, Will shirtless, and Pablo with a white beater right over John. It's uh, very disconcerting. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. <laughs> on, to, <laughs> on to the stats. Uh, uh, so we now have uh, still over uh, 500,000 uh, users active on Noster, which means that most people have not left. <laughs> Public keys have increased to 33 million. That's thank you, spammers. Um, <laughs> the zaps are kind of still not too high up, but still going at 1.7 million. Uh, BTC zapped 137, so the wash trading continues. <laughs> Public notes, thank you, spammer, 66 million notes. Uh, repos, 37, uh, 13 million. Uh, reactions, 24 million. So it seems like reactions are starting to catch up with zaps. Interesting. In terms of just like uh, acceleration, not same number. And all events, 132 million. So there is other stuff uh, that is not uh, social media cool all right guys so uh why don't we start with the nips because it saved the nips episode uh nip 72 <laughs> moderated communities reddit style merged who wants to talk a little bit about this one um is anyone actually are you implementing this in coracle <clears throat> no moderate communities I don't even know about this one. This is uh, <laughs> like I know about 172. Nope. I'm not doing this one. I'm working on private groups. We're reading on air the nip. No. Yeah. So I think the idea is like Vitor wanted something more like Reddit so that you could um, have moderate community. So if you want to post, let's say, a message. I mean, I'm probably butchering this because I, I haven't really looked deeply into it. From what I understand is that uh, you need to get approval to get your message accepted into the into the community. Uh, so uh, to me, this is not really interesting because I I don't like the idea of like some moderation happening. I feel like a lot of moderation techniques I think should be handled on, re- on the relay side because um, then it just like opens up for much more flexible different types of moderation and it opens it to the market versus when you're when you're deciding a type of moderation in this in the nip it kind of restricts it so that's the only thing that's kind of like made me not that interested into it but uh, it seems popular and i think amethyst users are happy with it so i know i'm confused this this is 172 but they renamed it so it stays under fiat jeff's arbitrary 100 limit <laughs> oh. <laughs> for just a little bit longer well they they merged my nip that was like 300 and something so yeah, but you're Will, so. 
You know, so so uh, Fiat gets up to a hundred, and Will gets from one from, from three hundred and on. I guess that's the. Um, you, you know what's interesting is like there is a lot of people in the world that wants moderation and they want to have in moderation. And and they are not gonna go to clients and applications that don't have crazy moderation. It, it's it's just how people are, right? People just want a better sell. They don't want freedom. So I don't know. I think it, I think it's useful for the people that want it. I do like the uh, the idea of in band uh, in band sort of lo- optional moderation. So you know, someone posts to a group, and then you can just see the unmoderated view of that. And then you can you can choose, and then anyone can do a moderation event, not just moderators, right? And then you can listen to those moderation events based on whether they're moderators for the group or based on whether they're in your follow graph or whatever. So like <clears throat> you can choose uh, you can choose social moderation or you can choose centralized moderation or you can choose no moderation. That I, I'm working on a different nip for private groups, and it has it's a little bit more open ended. I'm not cool. I can't compare it in detail, but I think that's. A healthy approach. I just want to make a meta point that it's kind of funny that, you know, we, we probably have some pretty popular clients, like Coracle is pretty popular, Domus is pretty popular. Um, but like the fact that we haven't even like heard, like haven't really looked into them or don't even had time to look into these nips, it just goes to show that there's actually so much going on that even like, sometimes it's even hard for us people writing the actual clients to even keep up with all this stuff. So, I mean, have you looked yeah. at all the stuff coming from Japan that's in Japanese only and like, I have absolutely no idea what's going on, <laughs> and it's fast. It's it was interesting because it just fucking goes. <laughs> they have their own clients that are completely yes. tailored to them. They have their own relays that you can only access if you're in Japan. So they're going hardcore into it in the in the best ways. Like this is what Nostra should yes. be about. It's like localized, you know, very specific to the culture, and 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 we wouldn't even see it, which is interesting, right? So uh, I'm glad. Yeah, it's it's, fun, it's funny because I I've been talking with some people, especially in the in the web web five space. <laughs> and, and they see, like, oh, but Nostra, if, if this if, if this is the approach, then Nostra is going to fragment. Yeah, like, like that's the <laughs> whole point. Fragmentation is a positive thing. It's only negative it's like when you're kind of all the things. <laughs> I've been following those conversations. Oh, yeah. I stopped. I stopped participating. <laughs> yeah, me too. Early, I mean, <laughs> in the very early days of the Twitter API, there were a lot of Japanese clients for Twitter. Like, and they were like completely sort of like their own sort of weird things too. It's kind of cool how they like say like fuck it and <laughs> just do things their own way out there. <laughs> I, I haven't been following the fragmentation discussions, but I don't even I don't see why that would, yeah why that's considered a bad thing because like society itself is fragmented and yeah. that's important for like division of different you know skill sets and so I don't know I, I don't see it as a bad thing. Yeah, but I think that that the it's. It's just uh, the mental model that we've had with with the silos, like with the Twitter and Facebook, is there is one state and, and the authority yeah. will tell you this is the state of the world. So then they are trying to create decentralized networks that mimic that lie, <laughs> basically, yes. because there is fragmentation. Like the state of Twitter is different than the state of Facebook. So so even there, there is no global state, right? But they're guess- trying to replicate this this fake world. Yeah, I guess that's why I get so annoyed at the people bitching about it. It's like, you know, that's the whole point of a open protocol. It's like you can participate or not participate. You don't have to agree with everything, every client, right? Just go in your own silo if you don't want to or have your own party. Like, just, you know, go build. Yeah, to get a little philosophical, like the classical liberal definition of community is basically uh, what you choose to be rather than what you actually are. And uh, like people are certain things and have certain like connections and relationships, and it's okay to like emphasize and like orient towards those. So being able to transcend the social social graph is uh, is like a project of uh, centralized fiat culture and mindset. So uh, I'm not interested in that. But uh, shout out to uh, Nostra.Kiwi and Satellite.Earth for uh, actually implementing good clients that do uh, NIP72. Yeah, it's... Uh, I, listen, more options, more options, more options, more options. People can and shout out to myself. do whatever they want. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm still interested in like doing a Reddit style thing that doesn't have like the downsides of Reddit with like, you know, moderator tyranny and stuff. I don't know if the, the moderated communities is that 
solution. But you know, it's, even if it's simple as something like topics, you know, people are, we were talking about a lot that a lot, and you know, hashtags are, are nice, but they don't really capture the essence of like a topic or a community very well because you yeah. can add multiple hashtags and it gets kind of messy. You know, a, a big difference between like Reddit and Noster. Uh, so a uh, Reddit, a Noster Reddit, and and Reddit is that there is no namespace scarcity, right? So you can have 50 communities with the same name. Like the, the reason why Noster moderation, uh, like tyranny and bullshit happens is because like there can only be one R Bitcoin, right? Like, and, and if you have that namespace, you sort of like win, right? It's like SEO. When, when it comes to Noster, like, you know, fuck it, just fork it and you can invite everyone. You can see everything. And then like, you know, if, if you're doing a better job, people will just migrate to yours. Or even better, they'll just merge both feeds. Another interesting approach to this problem is, uh, is like what Alex Gleason is doing with Ditto. So, you know, like uh, uh, Mastodon or like ActivityPub is sort of this like centralized community thing with moderator tyranny. And uh, if you if you bridge Nostra to Mastodon or uh, sorry, I keep saying that ActivityPub, you can kind of have both. Yeah. I mean, Mastodon is one thing that I that I want to to explore with. I was talking uh, with Fiat Chef about this that I I'm very interested in, in philosophy. So I want to create a relay where all conversation is about philosophy, but it's not just kind of one conversation. It's any kind of content. It's about philosophy. So the the way I'm going to approach it as, as a test is when you first try to to connect with the relay, I'm going to download like your last 30 days or notes or whatever it might be. And I'm going to run them through a llama and see, does this person talk about philosophy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, or are they just connecting? And and then I'm, I'm actually going to be looking at the notes. So for notes that are not tagging a note that, um, sorry, for notes that are not tagging a note or original post, I'm going to look at the contents and see, is this on topic? Uh, so it doesn't need to have like fi hashtag philosophy or hashtag Seneca. Like I will be hey, able Pablo, to tell. Hey Pablo, did you see my, uh, my post about uh, filtering drama so we can follow the right drama with the right tags by using <laughs> LLMs, you know, <laughs> to find the right drama? Because it's impossible to follow. <laughs> <laughs> so like I just want organized drama on my feet. <laughs> I actually wrote I I didn't see that note, but I wrote a note saying uh, that I'm gonna make a relay where the current thing is not allowed. <laughs> <laughs> Will you 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 seem distressed? Oh no, I'm just because I'm I've been thinking about this a lot in a different context because I wanted to replace. I was trying to set up a mailing list for you know for people to send me code patches and stuff. And I'm like, well, this would just be so much easier on Noster, and that's why I, mean, I started really thinking about like I really want to replace my email client with Noster, but there's a lot of steps we need to get there. So for instance, um, email has this concept like of two and CC, um, and this is actually very similar to just choosing which relays you're sending your note to, um, and. But the, I think the downside is, is that there's no way to mark, like at least in, a, in an email, you can see that you actually, that that person actually CC'd those. It's not just an ephemeral thing that was chosen by right. the client. So I was, I was thinking maybe we should have some syntax for um, like, like a CC syntax on notes to say I was intended for these notes to go to these, these relays so that we'd have much more of a, like a mailing list model and maybe there'd be like syntax for that. I don't know. Um, I was just, anyway, these That's are all pretty the, cool. Yeah. These yeah, are all like the ingredients that. I was thinking you would need for uh, building an email like client. There is an allegory situation. What people do is on Twitter is that they'll tag somebody on the picture as like sort of like an intended CC, make sure people see their post kind of thing, or they'll go below their post and CC, <laughs> literally CC and then add a bunch of people. So th there is probably like some uh, uh, very uh, natural sort of uh, uh, market demand for this. Yeah, it could, it could also make the network more resilient because you got like, it's basically self-hinting. You're like, no, no, yes. no, I'm, I'm publishing it for my particular like relay That's that I'm right. publishing from. And now no one can deplatform me unless they delete my content along with it. So, yeah. Yeah, because a big downside right now is that so many clients have like, they just kind of add everything to a pool. And that was kind of like, I, kinda, I think I started that and it was a bad idea. Um, but we definitely need to move to a more gossip model that where you can actually be more specific about re which relays you're sending to. It would also be nice because that would be a very easy way for relays to reject Blaster events. So if your relay is not yeah. mentioned on the destination, you can just easily reject it, which would be very, totally. very cool. We're stressing NVK out here. We're, we're yeah, almost through the I, first we, bullet we need, point. We, we, we need to move <laughs> one of the next 500,000 bullet points. All right, so it's NIP 79. 
digital contracts, covenants, and agreements. You know, when I first saw this BIP, this BIP, this NIP, um, I was kind of excited, but then I was like, oh God, no. I don't want people tying their Nostra IDs to contracts and things in the in the fiat world. Uh, mostly because it's non-binding and it might give people the wrong idea and it's very tricky. I'm not, yeah, I'm not interested in this one. I've been happily deleting this, the email notifications for this one and not reading them. Yeah, I haven't read it at all. I'm just not, not I interested. Have, I didn't know it existed. It's the everything on Noster thing, which is uh, fine. Like maybe, you know, if we can, if we can uh, avoid, you know, using other crypto stuff, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's just a database. This is like so far downstream from what we're actually building, but people can have fun if they want. Did we lose NBK? Did get rugged by Elon? Oh, we lost him. And he's gone. All right, All right Pablo's the host. <laughs> Welcome to uh, Noster Review with Pablo. Well, <laughs> Pablo Review, yeah. Well, <laughs> it, this one is going to be very easy because it's Coracle, so go ahead, John. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. So I released two updates yesterday. Uh, uh, let's see. So I support uh, Stemster music stuff, and I made made my own little music player, which was uh, a fun and frustrating exercise. And then uh, I also did... So like the beginning of NIP32-based labeling, this is kind of like that moderation thing we were talking about earlier. This is something I've been interested in for like you know, ever since I started my project prior to joining Noster, where you basically listen to your social graph about opinions uh, about things. So instead of relying on relays or moderators or whatever, or, or like, uh, you know, AIs to do moderation or content suggestions for you, <laughs> you just listen to what your what your friends say about things. So it's, it's like the first pass at that. It's not very impressive uh, and no one's used it yet. But um, but uh, there it is. Can you explain that better? Like what, what are, what are labels? I, I didn't really get what you, your explanation. Yeah. Labels are like, they're basically hashtags, but you apply them to other events. So, uh, you know, if you do a T tag, uh, on your kind one note, you're applying a topic and labels allow you to say, I'm going to apply this topic to this other note. So it's my opinion that it should be, you know, and it's not just limited to T tags. It's, uh, you can create your own nomenclature. So it, it kind of gets into like the, uh, semantic web bottomless hole of, uh, futile classification. You know, I'm not interested in like classifying everything, but if you have a nomenclature, that's like, I run this website that's about podcasts. And so I have a couple of terms that you can label podcasts with, and you can refer to my website to define those terms. Then you can label things using something other than, uh, you know, T tags. Some people are trying to use it to do like key value pairs. And uh, I, Pablo and Fiat Jaff and I have talked about this. We think that's a mistake. L, L tags should match more than one event uh, if you're querying for them. Okay, you are on the record as not <laughs> as not I, I'm officially, That is my official opinion. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> welcome, to, welcome to the right side. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Jeff keeps calling me a NIP32 maximalist, and I, I, don't know, I don't know what I did to deserve that. But So in some sense, a like is a label because you're saying, you know, you're, you're showing interest in something. The label is basically like, I'm interested or I like this thing. So this sounds like a generalization to, to more to like adding tags to things. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I like this thing as this thing, or I dislike this thing as this thing, you know, so there's, there's something in the spec, I'm not sure if it's a good idea or not, but it adds like, quality and confidence to the to the label. So you're like, this is about Alexander the Great, but I'm only like 30% sure. <laughs> uh, so um, there was this can, project. Can you talk about the, the uppercase L? Because the, the uppercase L is what, yeah, what confuses me. Yeah, I think that was a mistake. There was someone who just adamantly wanted uh, a namespace for labels. And I kind of think just everyone should share the same namespace and use namespace labels if they want. L tags or big L tags are probably a mistake. Um, maybe we can change that. But uh, yeah, I love the client, by the way. A lot of fun to use. Thanks. Uh, uh, Damas, uh, version 1.6-17, August 23rd. Uh, Mr. Wheel, do you want to read your notes? Sure. Um, so we added, I added this fun thing. It was just a random idea that I had because I've been working a lot of like 
backend stuff. And I feel like if you work on too much backend stuff, like your users start to get antsy. They're like, oh. Uh, so I was like, oh, damn, I need to throw them some meat to keep them happy. <laughs> um, so I added this status feature as like a front end feature, which about was, like, basically allows you to um, set kind of like what you're currently doing. And so this is kind of cool. It's, it's not really like a, a regular note in your timeline. It's, it's, a, it's a status that gets updated on your profile in real time and it can expire and it's, it's replaceable. So you can only have like one, one status of the same type at a time. So I wrote a nip about this. I think it's nip three something, 300 and something, 315. Um, and yeah, so you can set a general status, which is like I'm working, I'm like, you know, gardening. Um, and then there's, a, there's another status I define, which is the music status, which is kind of fun because you can update your software to like uh, send out like what you're listening to, like what music you're listening to. Um, and there's, and each, both of these statuses, they support links so that you can like kind of click, click the music and see and go and, and start listening to, your, to it yourself. So it's kind of fun. Um, so there's lots of actually things you can build on top of this. Uh, you can imagine a client that shows all the music statuses among your friends and just create a playlist and you can just listen to all the music that your friends are listening to. I think that would be cool if someone did that or even just viewing general statuses among everyone. Um, so yeah, that's just something I added for fun. Um, but in the in the background, I've been I've been working on some pretty serious tech, which I'm really excited about. Uh, the first one is NostraDB, um, and this is kind of like Domus's answer to having a local database. Um, a lot of clients like start out with a local database. I think Domus was one of the ones that didn't have a local database. It just kind of just pulled whatever was on the network. Uh, and this is okay, but it has some serious, serious drawbacks. Uh, you can't, it's, it's a lot harder to tally st stats on things because you're just kind of pulling data at the time. And sometimes data actually takes a while to pull because sometimes relays only send so much data back. So like I think stir fry only sends 500 events back maximum um, on any query. So you gotta like query lots of times and it's very slow and takes up a lot of data. And then once you close the app and open it again, you have to do that all over again and you don't have that info. So it's really, there's a lot of downsides to not have a database. So I figured, hey, if, if Domus is gonna do it, you know, I have the privilege of being a native client so I can do whatever I want and not be restricted by the web. So I've decided to build a super optimized database just specifically for Noster. And it's, it's not it's not dependent on Domus. It's actually a standalone library that um, that any native client can use, um, and it's built on something called LMDB, which is like this insanely fast database that actually Surfry uses. And a lot of the design of NostraDB is is based around Surfry, which is pretty cool. So it's as fast or even faster than Surfry. I tried to design it to be insanely fast. It's kind of overkill right now. It's like the fastest thing in my code base. Um, but that's nice though, because now I can. The idea is that I'm going to kind of build all of my clients on top of this. It's kind of like a native NDK in some sense. Um, eventually, going to add. Some so code, yeah, uh, it's not live yet, but the but Domus seems to be a lot faster. Is that something change? Uh, I ha it's going to, I mean, I haven't, there's no NostraDB. Oh yeah, sorry. Um, I'm using the NostraDB note format, which is like this compact, compressed, flat buffer style format for notes. So that is in Domus right now. So that might be, might, it might be a slight performance improvement because of that. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to, soon I'm going to switch over to NostraDB fully and it's going to be like a lot, lot faster. So yeah, I mean, I could, I could probably talk like a long time about NostraDB because it's about in terms of, but yeah, I don't want to make the whole episode about it. Um, I, then, we, we, we're going to start tracking the updates for it. Uh, on the on the show notes for for the next list. Yeah, maybe maybe I can I'm, I might make a video and do like a technical breakdown of like what it is and how you can use it in your in your apps. But uh, yeah, it would be a pretty long discussion. And the only last thing would be the Nostra skip thing that I'm working on, which is already in Domus. Uh, it just doesn't really do a lot right now. <laughs> and you have the add settings for disabling user statuses so that you don't have to see it. I guess. Yeah, I mean that was the first thing when I added it. One of the first things. Like, well, <laughs> I mean, this is it. annoying. Nice. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I had an option to say, well, I, I think great. it's pretty cool. All right, very cool. The the app seems to to have been like got a lot more polish in the last like few weeks. I I don't know if you did anything, but it does feel that way. Amethyst release version zero point seven five point one status updates add supports to nip 315 status updates add support for nip 40 expiration timestamps prune events accordingly amethyst new db uh, dm model uh and then uh, vitor gets into details on that yeah i think right when i added statuses vitor is like well that's unacceptable that there's something that Domus has that amethyst doesn't <laughs> so he implemented it like the next day so that's that's, a, that's what all these updates were i think uh, Snort version 0.1.13 Snort v2 design NIP 24 NIP 24 in crypto secret chats uh, NIP 13 proof of work NIP 31 out tags a spec for unknown events uh, render mentioned 
Zap Goals, uh, Embedded Fonts, and more. Oh, and uh, version 0.1.12, NSEC Bunker Support. Uh, I'll jump in on uh, NIP24 here. Sure. I, I added NIP24 encrypted chats to Coracle as well a couple weeks ago, and we've been working on it closely together. And there's like a there's a new um, cryptography standard that we're working on, but uh, apparently it's open to uh, chosen. Uh, was it chosen chosen uh, text? Nonce. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> chosen so, nonce. Chosen nonce. Oh yeah, Ch- chosen. Yeah, it's something chosen ciphertext or chosen or chosen oracle. No, 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 I don't know. Anyway, it's it's open to some attacks. So we're we're uh, trying to figure out how we can um, get that reviewed so that we have uh, have an have an encryption primitive that actually works for this kind of stuff. And then and then of course there's also the simple X uh, approach, which um, which might also work, but I think it also has its limitations. I, I really uh, until we have like a, a double ratchet sort of like solution-ish, which is pretty well sort of proven, uh, I think it's going to be hard <laughs> unless we get like, you know, some some uh, some Galaxy Brain uh, cryptographers involved. It's uh, it's hard to develop new uh, uh, crypto standards uh, for this stuff that don't get completely fucked with very fast. Yeah, I, I'm very, I'm kind of almost giving up on DMs on Oster. Um, I mean, I think we should always have a really good spec, the best we can do until we have, but like for really serious, you know, private con- conversations, you, it's just not good to use Nostra. but maybe that's not what people use Nostra for. Unfortunately, whenever, if it's there and people will use it for that and, and people don't really know that it's not good and it's leaking metadata well, and stuff. But imagine like Nostra is the only connection you have with, with a person, right? Like yeah. you still, need something that's not in clear in order to give your simplex link for example right yeah. so 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 for coordination at least i i think fiat jeff was was interested in simplex as maybe the protocol for nostr dms so we can maybe marry the two there is like a few other people mentioned the same i i I think that like maybe maybe there is a way of making that happen and like you know it doesn't have to be the end all solution but but uh, I don't know. It seems to be a very decent candidate. So I, I, I think what we should do is we should just look at the design of Simplex and see why why it works well. Um, so for instance, they use this this concept of, of a queue. So if you like push messages onto the queue and then the, the receiver of the messages pulls it from the queue. Um, so it's not peer to peer, but it's also not relays where like things are yeah. permanently stored. They're kind of push and pulled. Like what if we had that type of primitive on t- in, in Nostra? It would be like a, a pretty complicated relay extension, but there's no reason why we can have a Nostra queue in some sense. And if we had yeah. a primitive like that, maybe we could start building more powerful DMs and more private DMs. Yeah, and relays could just host SimpleX queues, uh, and we could use the SimpleX protocol. Uh, it sounds pretty complex, though. They've got twenty thousand lines of Haskell as the only implementation, <laughs> so I, I don't know what that looks like in JavaScript. But like, it also depends on what you're going for. Like, a poor a poor version of encryption that leaks some metadata could be sufficient. Like, what I want to replace is Facebook groups. Right, they're private groups, but it's like it's not like it's you know, you're a spy or you're a political dissident or something. Um, you know, you're just trying to have your community not, not uh, you know, uh, looked at by, by people outside the community. So like re- leaking relay metadata, leaking member lists, stuff like that is kind of acceptable for that use case. And, you know, doing it with encryption rather than centralization is already so much better than what Facebook already provides. So right. I, I want to be pragmatic with with the trade-offs, but it, it is also like, yeah, people will just use the tools out there and then get arrested and go to jail and die. Yeah. So don't want to do that. It's it's funny. It's 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 better in theory, but I, what I've noticed for some users is that they'll once they realize that the metadata is leaking and that people on the network can see that they're messaging certain people, they'll actually just go back to like Instagram or Facebook and start using that, even though it's like not end to end encrypted. <laughs> Yeah, well, the, the metadata on NIP4 is definitely really bad. NIP44 is a lot better, or uh, I guess NIP59 and 24. They hide all the regular metadata. Basically, all you know is someone got a message at some point in the last week is the extent of the explicit metadata. The metadata that then becomes a problem is like, well, this relay was listening for the first time that it got the event, and sound it, so now it knows roughly when it was created. Uh, you know, it saw it first on this relay, and that relay is selected by this group of people, and so therefore now you have a smaller anonymity set. So 
that that more sophisticated analysis then becomes uh, becomes in play. And then also like one thing I want to mention about NIP4 DMs is uh, apparently uh, if you use them enough, they weaken your key to brute force attacks. So like if you send 10,000 NIP4 DMs, uh, it reduces the um, the bytes of uh, or the what is it? Bytes of entropy from 96 to 72, if I'm remembering that right, uh, which makes it a lot easier to brute force private keys. So it's like all of our private keys are already sort of compromised, which is uh, not ideal. Yep. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I feel like unless you have, yeah, I mean, you you hit the nail on the head. Like, unless we have like forward privacy on DMs, use DMs assuming they're going to get leaked. Yeah, but at the same time, I mean, like, come on, we, we can we can do a little better than what we have. That's that's sort of like the way I like to look at this. <laughs> yeah, we we can still do a little bit better, you know. Like, it, it, it's like uh, I mentioned to Will this a few episodes ago. Just have something like uh, used to be called OTP. Oh, sorry, OTR. Uh, now it's called I don't know Mimo or something like that. It's just some double ratchet that happens on the on the client. Uh, anyways. Yes, I won't deviate the topic too much, but uh, but it would be nice to have something something better. Iris version zero point two point two. Uh, they added note previews, content loading, now supports secret chats that don't leak metadata, and uh, a bunch of other little things. Um, Noster wiki update one. Not Kiwi. Uh, 19th of July. Yeah, Kiwi, not Kiwi. <laughs> Noster talk Kiwi. God damn it, fruits. Pablo, it's your <laughs> fault. <laughs> browse, browse by community and user groups, progressive web app, communities feed, long form and communities chat, three modes of sign in, and a bunch of other stuff. And jump, a static Noster gateway that gateway that allows you to browse profiles notes and relays in in it is an easy way to preview resource and then open it with preferred client this was translated right I, it has uh enchamp has uh server side rendering so it's very nice if you want to share something oh, nice. the same thing that primal does yeah yeah it's super cool the deployment in nostr.com works about I'll say like 50% of the time, it used to be 10, so it's much better. Oh, um, that's 100% improvement. <laughs> right? <laughs> she, she, she certainly made a deployment on nostrglobalfeed.com. Global it's exactly the same, it's just the same software. I guess because it has less traffic, it works much more reliably, so I usually use that one. Yeah, I just I'm a little concerned here that this person is going to try to take our monopoly in 500 errors as a service. <laughs> <laughs> and, and jump is nice because it it also provides links to, for each for a whole bunch of different clients. So if you go to the the preview page, then you can open it up in whatever client you feel like. Every every client except Domus. So I don't know. That's weird, but <laughs> that is weird. Well, it's written by Fiat Josh. So it's not surprising. <laughs> Maybe you stepped on some toes. Yeah, I think at some point it's uh, expected to migrate to using NIP89. So that means that it, you know, <laughs> he won't be able to censor you. <laughs> I, I, actually, I think the server side rendering is kind of a downside because I, I wanted to deploy something like this on Domus.io for my for my deep links, but I don't have to. I don't want to have to run any server code. I just want like a small JavaScript file. So I'll probably end up writing my own that just uses. Like Thomas Webb, yeah. Things, but the problem is like until Noster has world domination, without previews, it's going to be very hard to share Noster content outside of Noster. So like I I don't see a way in which we don't have to be very good at previews. Oh, I see. You got you guys like the uh, metadata preview things. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. I think that I want to deploy this for Coracle too, but Open Graph. That's what they call it. Open Graph. Yeah. Yeah, if you share something on Twitter, you, you want the note to be rendered on, on Twitter, not just be like this random link, right? That's right. Well, it doesn't matter anyways. I did a test yesterday. It does look like um, like Twitter is shadow banning a bit the primal links, which is kind of disappointing. So like I was testing, posting content that's native to Twitter, the same exact content uh, on Twitter, and all, or posting like a snippet with a, a rendered preview link from primal and like 
I asked a bunch of people if they saw on their feed without searching for it. And like most people do not see it. Well, don't they like penalize like links in general? Like they try to keep as many. That's people. right. I think uh, more, more uh, stress and effect. No, no. They're, they're, if you put content with the link, they're pretty decent. But yes, it doesn't, it doesn't rate as high, but still kind of annoying. It's very hard to know what the fuck's going on on Twitter in regards to this kind of like shadow banning and shadow moderation. Well, that's the thing. They, they say they open their source, their algorithm, but I like looked at the code. It wasn't at, at all obvious, like what it was doing, like, or, or how, I don't know. It's, I don't know if it's useful just open source in the code if, if it's still complicated. Well, I mean, there's like what over 12 years of like Scala macaroni. Nostur, iOS 1.5.0, follow hashtags and do send repost and a bunch of other things. Yeah, Nostur is really, is really impressive. I mean, it's kind of like Domus's main competitor because it's, it's a Swift UI at client and it, they have a local database, which is what I'm working on. So he did a lot of things right and it's getting really, really good. I'd say it's probably better than Domus right now, which is why I'm kind of like, oh shit, I got to catch up. Um, so definitely check it out. I, I really like the client. So And they have a really, and he's working on a cool, uh, um, uh, it's kind of like a tweet deck style version for the desktop client. So check it that look, looks awesome as well. It's got music streams too, which is, uh, I, I think that's such a huge improvement to the user experience, being able to like listen to stuff that people are publishing while at the same time you're browsing your feed. That's just super cool. Yeah. Um, it, it does have that Japanese client vibe to it too. Uh, even though I don't know <laughs> if it's Japanese or not, it just has that vibe. I think he's updating the design to be more like Thomas, so it looks starting to look better. Okay. Loom version 1.2.0, cross-platform Noster desktop client available on macOS, Windows, and Linux. Do you guys have any uh, comments? Loom is great. I really, really like It's super early days. Uh, the 1.2, I think it should be more like 0 0.02 or something, but it's really, really, really good client. Yeah, it's it's using something that I didn't know existed. Uh, it's called Tari, which is, it makes, it, it's sort of like the Electrum thing to, to run like web app-like applications uh, natively, but it looks very, very good. Like it, it, it feels very, very native. And yeah, it's a, it's a really good client. It, it has a bit of, um, of a tweet deck style to it. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm very, very interested in this one. Yeah, I like like this sort of like different UIs trying to do different things in a sort of slightly different way with the same content. It's kind of cool. Yeah, I downloaded this app. I knew that it was implemented uh, using NDK, and I downloaded the app, and I saw just how fast it was. I was like, holy shit, what the hell is going on here? I started looking at the code, and yeah, it's uh, it's done very, very well. It's very impressive. Um, all right, uh, Primal uh, web app now has an edit profile page, iOS. Test flight two is here. Media uploads, faster feed refresh, solidified reply UI, and a, a, a bunch of other things. Android version 0.14.3 dash beta. Explore content search, explore user search, profile, follow, and follow. And today they released a post talking about the whole uh, moderation thing and the whole uh, uh, spam filters and how you can edit and how you can see your list and all that stuff that should uh, lower the heat on the drama. Yeah, so much drama, Jesus Christ. Semi Soul's a hero. It's not like they're using like 50 clients for people to use. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it was unwarranted. I feel like people had a genuine reaction when they discovered that some of their friends were being, you know, shadow banned. And a lot of people, like, for, I was even using the trending feed because I, I thought it was really useful. But now I learned that, like, some of my friends, like Ralph, were being shadow banned for, like, dubious reasons. Obviously, that's going to upset people. And it also sets a precedent for new people joining the space that are like, oh, is this what we're doing here? Is this we're just actually doing the same things that, that Twitter's doing? So I don't think the, the uh, backlash was unwarranted. And I'm glad that they're you know, moving into a direction to, to fix a lot of these issues, but making it more transparent and more in the hands of the users. Cause that's, that's how it should be. So. I mean, personally, I found like, you know, the, the initial sort of like few comments, like very warranted because it wasn't clear, but then it's just like, Jesus Christ, it becomes like sort of like a, a SJW let's cancel people kind of deal, mm -hmm. which I don't like appreciate. 
I, and, and then the other thing too is that like you know if I'm running a server and somebody is like quote unquote attacking my server with like games I'm, I'm gonna like block them right from my server now like could have that being maybe a little bit more clear more transparent yeah but I think it's early days too right I mean like you know you're trying to build stuff and uh, and you know some people are just being dicks I guess the thing is that uh, that like Primal put themselves in this position where they they sort of added that caching layer and they do all this centralized stuff for the sake of user experience and but like you know no one else gets in trouble uh, for this kind of stuff because no one does anything so like you know in a sense it's good because they're they're trying to solve these user experience problems but in another sense they're just they're, they're giving themselves the responsibility for for doing it uh, transparently, like Coracle doesn't need to be transparent. Tra transparent because there is everything runs on the client, and I don't like even try to solve a lot of problems. So uh, I don't know. They're just like shoot for a higher bar, I guess. Oh, but even on the client, you could you could do censorship, right? Like the thing with happening. You with, could absolutely. With Amethyst. I mean, uh, with yeah. Amethyst doesn't have run a server, and there was still a bunch of drama because of censorship. So I I don't think that's the case. Yeah, that's true. That's true. A big part of the issue is is the fact that you know they're running these centralized algorithms, and you know they're making a curation decision. You know, like what what you're saying on to make the user ex experience better, but it's always going to have these issues where people are going to you know point out flaws in their algorithm and abuse the algorithm, and they're and yeah, they have to make moderation moderation decisions which are going to upset people. But just like you know, that is just the nature of, of the centralized thing that they're doing, where you can do the same types of algorithms just in a in a better way on, on the client side. I think with like based around level of trust. You know, like I think, you know, it's not impossible that, you know, some guy discovers that he can, I don't know, like game Dumas's UI somehow, right? Like with some injection, like, you know, cold injection on the UI or whatever. And like, and you, you may not also want to tip because you don't know who's doing it, right? You don't know their story. You don't know anything about them if they haven't done a disclosure to you. So like... You know, the, the first reaction as a software maker is to like, fuck it, is press the delete button and press the block button, right? Like to make whatever thing that's happening stop. And, and I guess like it's so fucking early. Like people need to give people making things a slack because like if you discourage people from, from creating new things and, and trying things and failing often and making new things like they're not going to be interested in making new things and there is very little incentive to make new things right now on Nostra, right because like you know we haven't had a second major wave of users so like you know all these people are doing this because you know they believe in it they like it and they're ready to like you know pound sand for a while so i don't know i i just feel like there is like a a hint of sort of SJWism that that really, really, really like triggers me. <laughs> I see it completely, completely differently. Um, if you don't, if you design your algorithms that don't even verify zaps in your algorithms, you deserve to be attacked and you deserve to have your algorithm completely gamed. Like, oh, absolutely. You, <laughs> I don't, I agree on that. What I don't agree is like people just fucking like, you know, spending their days just like crying on the, on the thing because the guy got like blocked. Yeah, I saw your dark mode, uh, dark mode conversation <laughs> yesterday. Uh, when, when are we? When are we going to fix Zaps? I'm I'm curious about that, and I don't know enough about Lightning Lightning verification to to know like how how fixable is uh, is that? Like, if I just run a server that publishes a bunch of Zap confirmations, I can fake them, even in a way that no one can detect. What, what's the solution? You could never fake a Zap on my on my post because if you properly validate them and you have a non custodial Zapper. Then only my node is sending out the zap, and if and if if you do the verification properly, uh, so that, I think that's where zaps are most useful. Is if if you're if you're using them to verify, let's say you know if you got a DM and you're trying to get your DMs using your zaps, like you can 100% do that, and you don't have to worry about fake zaps because your node is um, is sending out the zaps. But yeah, if you're if you're using algorithms, you're trying to do ranking algorithms on zaps, then you basically have to. Um, trust every zapper out there and you can't really trust every zapper because zappers can send fake stuff right but if you know your zapper is not fake is not sending out fake zaps then you can trust that i think that's like there's like this very subtle thing that people are maybe there's some confusion around and maybe it warrants like a whole nother video on it but um, i don't think you can use zaps for like ranking content uh, but you can use it for filtering per personal content is there anything in lightning itself that like produces an artifact that says like verifiably these two keys exchange these funds 
The only way you can do it is if you actually run a node and do all the verification yourself. Yep. You can't do it based okay. off just the huh. data on the node. That's kind of crazy. Because, yeah, you, like initially, I mean, I, th I was thinking about this for a year, like when I was doing this app spec, because I thought originally, like, oh, well, you have, you know, if the, once the pre-image is revealed, you can use the pre-image to prove that like it matches the description hash, but it doesn't really matter because the Bolt 11 pre-image and, and, um, and payment hash, those are just arbitrary data and it can be anything. So anyone can just make a fake Bolt 11 and it doesn't, you can't tell if it's a real Bolt 11 or not. So, um, yeah. Does Bolt 12 fix this? <laughs> um... Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Lightning is going to be like this until we have covenants. Uh, but that's a whole other discussion. <laughs> <laughs> Very other discussion. But but I don't know, like, I mean, since we have this small little tangent, uh, we'll, is, is there like any other sort of thing that we could do to improve Zaps so that people who are not like implementing, who don't have access to a non-custodial node, for example, or are using different clients, maybe could improve? Yeah, I, I think there's lots we can do, and I think there's probably in the future going to be a Zabs V2 spec that kind of gets rid of the Ellen Euro requirement. I think that's the biggest thing. Is that what you're announcing in Tokyo? Just kidding. Um, should I? I don't know. I think I, it would be cool to have you know to actually do this. Um, there was there was one NIP, an extension on um, Nostra Wallet Connect that allows you to fetch invoices for your from your own node, but that's not really what I want. Like I think Ben did that. Uh, one of the best. I, I you know if you have ideas on Zap two O, I, I think mm -hmm. this is like a great sort of because we're in between the next wave of users, like flushing flushing out like Zaps with uh, with like some some quality improvements would be tremendous because then when people come in volume, like another order of magnitude of users, like this would be great. Yes. So the, 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 the improvements, the, the only improvement that it would, that it would improve in some sense would just be to reduce the um, centralization requirements of, 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 of getting zaps, right? Because so, right mm -hmm. now you depend strongly on, you know, um, Wallace Satoshi and get LB and things like that. Yeah. But if we, if we move to a mode where your node can simply um, act as an Ellen Ural server over Noster. So in, you basically anyone can re re fetch invoices from your node um, without an Ellen Ural server, they just do it over Noster. I think that would be an insane improvement because you could just ditch the Ellen Ural requirement. And then- Isn't um, that like similar to like PayNIMS in a way? Um, vaguely, I guess, but you know, those are, those are pretty like non, I mean, those are interactive like, in some sense, but yeah, they require yeah. a channel to go over and whatnot, but you, we can use Noster um, in the same way you're using Nostra Wallet Connect, we just do it for, um, you know, anyone can fetch invoices over Nostra this way. So I think this would be a huge improvement. Cool. I think you're probably like the most <laughs> the most uh, 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 lightning knowledgeable person in Noster that, that I know of. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I was working on lightning. I uh, see lightning and stuff. Before. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I remember that. You were working on lightning before, uh, before Noster. Cool. All right. Development kits. Uh, I... It's it's in plural in plural now because there's two. <laughs> All right, Pablo. I, I was, why, I was why, afraid you were gonna say it was being written in Perl. That would be. Uh, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen. You know, if you're gonna do that, at least do it in like in Fox or something like that. All right, uh, Pablo. Oh, take it from a, here. I make a Haskell NDK. That'd be fun. <laughs> Okay, uh, NDK zero point eight point twenty one. The protocol is the App Store. That, yeah, that was a pretty. Uh, that was a, f a few uh, weeks ago. Uh, so I added uh, NIP89 to make it very, very easy because I want to see more NIP89 support uh, across everything and destroy the concept of app stores. So, so yeah, it uh, makes uh, interacting with NIP89 very, very easily. Uh, you can create from whatever application you're you're writing uh, the the app recommendations and now the app handlers and the app recommendations. NIP90 support. I <laughs> added this one even though. The NIP is not merged yet, but I, I needed it for, for Vendata. So yeah, you can create uh, jobs and job feedbacks and DVMs in a very, very easy way with, um, with this new version. NIP99, which is the Craigslist-like event. And then I released a bunch of things that <laughs> that I had written months ago, but I never released. Uh, this one is especially for John. Is uh, the the Dexicache? Uh, I know you you love it. Uh, you want Oracle to Dexy. run on Dexicache? 
I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's very old. It's very, <laughs> I mean, very old within uh, Nostra terms. It's like three or four months old, but um, it does make yeah, make like the caching yeah agent. <laughs> but the the caching is is cool with with NDK because when from your application you are just uh, telling NDK give me like uh, you send a filter and and NDK takes care of of everything whether like you can tell it's just query the cache or query in parallel cache and relays or first go to the cache and if you don't find it there go to the relays so for the application itself you just set the adapter and then you just forget that you that there is a cache go uh, happening there so it's it it makes like it's very very low hanging fruit to to increase the um, the performance of, of your applications and the number of queries you send to to relays then i wrote um NDK Svelte, which is a, is a new library that I've been using for, for two months, but I released it last week. And it, it makes um, talking to relays in a very Svelte uh, natural way. So you are actually using stores to, to talk to the relays and to, to fetch, uh, to get events back. So for I was thinking, how would, um, how would a non-Noster developer that is used to Svelte uh, implement a, a Nostra client. And this is the way that I, that I could think of. I, I, uh, there's one of the community managers or community support or whatever it's called, uh, people from Svelte is on Nostr. So I discussed this a little bit with, with him. But yeah, this, uh, this, um, this uh, NDK Svelte makes it very, very, very cool to, to interact with, with, like particularly for non Nostr developers. It's like very cool that they can just jump in and be productive from, from the first day. And then a bunch of new components on on in the case built components library. That is that it. That that that's it. <laughs> that's it. There is a few other things, but like I mean, I'm highlights components, whatever. Okay, here's a bunch of components. <laughs> nice. I'm I'm constantly on the fence as to whether I should keep investing in my own uh, library or switch over to NDK. I keep looking at it and just like I don't know, not quite not quite ready to make the switch. The the thing is that as more developers come in into using NDK, they send patches, right? And it becomes yeah. better. So it's like you're writing a client and you're writing a library. So yeah, and I want to I want to contribute. You know, it's it's an uphill battle, I think. Yeah. So when you when you say you add support for let's say DVM, what does that mean? Is it do you have like just a bunch of helpers for constructing the notes or something? Yeah, yeah. So basically, you have a, a nice interface to say, okay, add input, for example. So yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a thirty lines of code basically. But yeah, that's that's what I mean. And when and this Dexy cache is that like is it using index DB or something underneath? Yeah. Is uh, is is this yeah, so is like the it's N, it's an NDK's version of like a local database? Is that the idea? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, so, but, but basically, the idea is I, I have a Redis cache, I have a Postgres, I think a Postgres cache. It's not released yet, but yeah, a Postgres cache um, and a Dexy cache, right? So, within the same code base, the part that runs on the server, I can have the Redis cache, and then on the front end, on on the client, I can have the the Dexy cache or or whatever else, other other kind of adapter, and each concern hits the right database, but the code is all the same, right? So is it um, is it just a key value store or do you actually have full query support? Uh, so it depends on, on the adapter. So each uh, the, the adapter has to be the one. So the adapters basically reply to filters, right? Um, so what they see is the filter. Uh, so for example, for IndexedDB, it doesn't have like real like like SQL types type queries. Um, it's sort of kind of mimics uh, SQL. So yeah, it just looks into the shape of the filter that you sent in, and it massages the 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 the, the query that it sends to IndexedDB in something that that IndexedDB can can support. But like the Redis cache, for example, that's that's just key value, of course. Cool. All right. Thank you, Pablo. Library is uh, Ru uh, Rust Noster, well, really it's Crust Noster, version 0 0.23.0. <laughs> Implement NIP39 external identity tag and a bunch of other things. Uh, do you guys have any comments? I feel like there's like six Rust libraries for Noster, yeah. and I, have, I like don't like any of them. I just wrote my own. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, it sounds like that standards uh, XKCD uh, little cartoon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because there's there's so many different ways to do stuff in Rust. There's not like it's not like Python. There's like one way. It's just like I don't know. So what you're saying is Python is superior. 
<laughs> okay, so uh, highlighter. I wonder who who works on this one. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this is a highlighter extension, and I named it "Thanks Comrade Google" because they approved them. They approved the, the extension on the on the Chrome Store, which allows you to create highlights on on any website, and it allows you to to create bookmarks that are stored in NIF fifty one lists, either as encrypted or public, which is kind of nice. And yeah, it's uh, it's cool. Like you can just install it. It uses NSEC Bunker because I don't want to ask for your uh, NSEC on a, <laughs> on a fucking extension. Um, so so yeah, it's um it's a quick little thing that I that I wrote um but yeah it took like two months for Google to <laughs> to approve it um but yeah it it works pretty well um yeah I like it. But it needs NSEC Bunker. It needs NSEC Bunker because I don't want to ask for it. so the thing is that within a within Chrome I cannot talk to other extensions without modify like without injecting content That's and annoying. i really don't want to inject content on like i don't want to ask like pseudo mode on your on your browser i just don't think that that makes sense so the only option so i so it can't use like get lb or those nip7 things no 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 because it cannot talk to the nipo7 extension right uh, so it's either inject uh, a script an arbitrary script into everybody's browser which sounds horrendous to me uh, like the way it works what could go it wrong it doesn't require it doesn't know yeah, <laughs> I, I just don't want to do it. And I, if I end up using ten different extensions, I don't want the ten different extensions to ask to ask for my my NSEC. That I don't think that's how extensions should, like how um, Nostra extensions should work. Um, so that's that's the way I, I came up with the um, when you install the extension is <laughs> among the all the extensions that I have is the only one that says no permissions required. Like all the other extensions <laughs> require some kind of permission. <laughs> this one doesn't need anything. Like it cannot even tell on what website you are until you click on it. It. Like until you click on it, it doesn't even see the URL. Um, it, it can only highlight stuff when you go to the context menu and you click highlight, and then it receives only the text, like nothing else. It cannot spy on you. I, I like that. <laughs> well, it's annoying because I want to use this, but now I guess I got to implement NSYNC Bucker and, and Damas to use it. So this is might this might force me to. <laughs> Dude, NIP, NIP forty six is very is very easy. We we need to improve the <laughs> the NIP. Like we need to rewrite the NIP, but it it like. It works really fast. I, I like it. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I mean, I, I still feel like until we have key delegation or some other solution, the, the key stuff still up in the air. Uh, <laughs> as is, won't scale. Um, but that might be just my personal opinion. Swarmster version 0 0.24.0. A free and open source QA, Q&A Nostra client. Well, that's cool. I haven't tried it yet, but... That would be useful. Stack Overflow on Noster. Yeah, right? I mean... And then DVMs can answer the uh, answer the questions. Or they can also <laughs> ask, too. And then <laughs> they can sell ads on the traffic that the DVMs do to yes. each other. Yes! So couldn't the DVM answers just be chat GPT answers? Is that like what people are doing? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, they could. I I think um, <laughs> I have not implemented a single DVM that does uh, that talks to chat GPT, but you could. Hmm, that'd be cool. Yeah. Well, talking about DVMs, DVM service provider by Pablo. Yeah, so this is the old uh, version I released. Well, I didn't release it, but I published it today, the, the code, uh, for the new backend that I'm using. This announcement that's here is for the old repo that I had that was using uh, Prem AI, which is like a self-hosted. It's sort of like um, like an umbrel that you can run on your computer, and it deploys like a bunch of different models. And if you have no idea how to deploy an AI like Llama or something like that, you, this is just click install and, and that's it. And and yeah, this um, this service provider is is to write DVMs uh, that use Prem AI. The new one that I have is doing things a little bit different because I yeah, I basically rewrote the thing because one of the things that I want is within the same process, within the same code base, to have a bunch of different pub keys. Because I want, like the way I see it is the pub keys are the ones that are going to go long tail, right? So instead of having 
10 million different kinds for each kind of, of thing that you want to be done. So for example, today I released uh, a DVM that analyzes your activity and it looks for things that you might have missed. And I don't want to use one kind for that, that very, very specific use case. So the way I can do it is content discovery kind. And when you query for a, you ask DVMs for a content discovery kind, you can see a bunch of different pub keys for DVMs. And each pub key tells you, I implement this algorithm. I look for things in this way. Like I can give you things from a year ago that you might have missed. Or I can give you things that, um, I don't know, people were talking about you, you know, stuff like that. So I wanted within one process to be able to run 30, 50 different uh, pub keys. Can you quickly explain like what DVMs are for people who don't know what they are? Yeah. So uh, data vending machines is just a way for you to send requests of some kind to a processing algorithm of some kind, right? So you can think of there, there are a bunch of uh, implemented DVMs um, that are doing, for example, image generation. You can tell it, give me an image for this text or give me an image for this event. So you can give it a node one, blah, blah, blah. You give it a batch 32 and it grabs that event. It looks at the content or it processes the event in whatever way it, might, it sees fit, and it gives you an image based on that. Or you can say, give me a summarization of this, of this event, or give me a translation. So for example, for translations, it would be very cool because you could do uh, translate this event, and it gives you back a translation on whatever language you requested. And then other clients, because the, the result is public, other clients could see when they want to see a translation of that note, they can just query, has anyone translated this note ID into whatever, Japanese? And you can just show the translation. And then you can pipe things so you can pipe the, the output of one job as the input for the next job. So for example, you can say, give me a summary, like you can say, download this MP3 and pipe it uh, and give me a, a text extraction of this, of this MP3, right? So translate, uh, transcribe this podcast. And then give me a summarization of that podcast. That's a different job. And then get, create an image based on, on the summarization of this podcast, right? So it's cool because at, as, at each step, of the process, you have a, comp a market of different DVMs with different price points, with different algorithms, with different trade-offs. Like some of them might be self-hosted and a little bit slower. Some of them might be using OpenAI or one of these hosted um, AI models. But yeah, it's it, it's very cool. So for example, today I, I implemented this one algorithm to, to get what you have missed. And the way it works is when you send the, the request, it fetches the uh, the events that you've signed, like the last uh, 500 events by default, and it creates a bitmap, and it says, okay, you were active at this point, at this point, at this point, you you were on Noster uh, uh, during this point, then it, it adds, I think it's like 60 second time window, and then based on that, it says, okay, during this time period, you, you were offline. Now I'm going to get all the reposts that your network has done, all the people that you follow, what has, have they reposted? And if you weren't active during any of the reposts of a note or when the original note was published, then that note maybe you did not miss. So then I rank them by the number of reposts. And that way it's I mean, it's not a super complex algorithm, but it's like I just implemented it this morning. Uh, it took me, <laughs> you know, like like an hour to to write, to write the algorithm, um, and and then Semisol says, "Oh yeah, your algorithm is bullshit. <laughs> I can write a better one." <laughs> Fuck yes, yes, go ahead. And then that means that then Deimos and Coracle and Amethyst and any client can use any of these algorithms to find what did I miss, what's trending, like there is a, a, a DVM for the primal uh, trending algorithm and you can see, you can get the data from there or you can get it from, from uh, Nostra of the Wine or, you know, like anyone can create their own algorithm to get content, Nostra content discovery or Nostra people discovery. What's, so, what's the output of that of that algorithm? Is it like a list of, of events or something? Yeah, it's just the content. So, for example, for the um, Nostra content algorithm, it's just e tags. So the the content is a JSON stringified uh, bunch of e tags. For the people, it's obviously p tags, and for the, and then you can have t tags. You can yeah, it's just any kind of any kind of uh, any kind of tags. 
why couldn't it just like generate an actual list event and then I don't I don't maybe I'm confused. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to take that on a sidebar, Mr. Pablo and Mr. Will. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had a DVM uh, discussion on the last episode, but maybe we do a whole episode on just DVMs and, and other cool uses like that. I don't, I don't mean to cut off, but we still have a few more that I'm going to have to go through now. Go for it. All right. Stemster is now live. Oh, that's very cool. I forget the name of the, the guy who makes it. It works for a uh, title. You can uh, have your music on it. It's really cool. Amber, version 0.0.7, uh, Nostor event signer for Android. Is there like Nostor, I imagine? I, it, it, they say event signer, Amber? so I assume it's just like a thing that signs events. I don't know if it would be like Nostor. Maybe it is like Nostor, I don't know. Yeah, yeah this is, um, it's, um, yeah, it's like Nostor, but it doesn't work within, it's not an extension. It, it works oh. as, a, as an Android process. And apparently there is some type of IPC, uh, inter-process communication in, in Android. So apparently this is, this can talk uh, in the background with, with Amethyst and it can just hold, hold just hold nice. the keys. Yeah. It, it's very specific to, to how Android works though. It's kind of cool how you, you know, it's not a bad thing to separate keys from clients. Uh, you have like oh, yeah. a different kind of app that does the signing so that you're not trusting. Yeah, the and that it's not updating all the time too, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, please don't update. I don't want software updates <laughs> when it comes to <laughs> <key> sign. <laughs> uh, Magic Web Store, a simple Bitcoin web store with whisper addresses for enhanced privacy. Seems cool. I haven't heard about it. Nostri.me version 0.1.2, slug me baby. <laughs> a <laughs> Nostr based application to create, manage, and discover link lists, uh, show notes, and other stuff. Nice. I like Nostri. It's, it seems like a good way to get non-nerds uh, non onto Nostr by just competing with Linktree. It's really straightforward. You can add regular links. So it just works like a legacy web application, but integrates Noster. So yeah, I think it's great. Oh, are the are the only fan girls using it yet? Because you know it's going to win like Linktree does when the only fan ladies are on it. I have no idea. No. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody has an idea. Nobody says plug it in on that scene. That's you and BK. Actually, there was there was a time when Linktree <laughs> was censoring um, OnlyFans people, I think, or even if you uh, maybe not that, but maybe if they had a Linktree in their bio on Instagram, they would get um, like shadow ban on Instagram. So oh, maybe really? Just like, yeah. So wow. just having like different different uh, options is good. Because like you know, it takes a lot of work for somebody to put a, a HTML up with like a few links on it, right? Like it's fascinating to me. It's like impossible um, for most people. Like, I know, I know, but like it's just so insane, right? Yeah, no, I've never seen the point of Linktree. Uh, it's just just make a website, man. Like, come on, make it look good. Because Linktree is not does not look good. I know, uh, but people clearly can't. So. <laughs> I mean, like it's, it's but like they make so much money you know instead of buying another third ferrari just like hire a web dev you know like <laughs> anyways uh, the world's a strange place nostr zap version 0 0.21.0 zap any nostr and pub or note from anywhere you guys know anything about this one nope nope it's by sam Sam Samskis, so it's got to be good. Okay. All right, Bitcoin Projects leveraging Nostr. Geyser integrates Zaps. That's nice. Now Geyser needs to make all the Geyser stuff that's centralized into Nostr only, and then it's going to be very cool. I thought it was really cool. Like I randomly like zapped a post. I didn't even know it was a, a, a Geyser fun thing, and it was just like, oh, you supported this project. I'm like, oh, I don't know. So I thought it was pretty cool. Nice. Yeah, that, that's what I want, right? Like that's that's the... That's the Nostr value prop is that magic of like, you don't even know, ideally, that things are Nostr based content that like just show up in different places in different formats and you can interact with them. I can't wait until we have a distributed uh, multi-step infinite event loop uh, <laughs> that like someone has to debug. <laughs> <laughs> Fun times. Umbro. Uh, now you can sync your private relay on Umbro with public keys. Oh, that's cool. It's a nice way of backing up your stuff. This is the first real relay I've run. I like it. 
It, it works. It's it's okay. a perfect archival relay. You don't have oh, to even really? have it all on all the time. Yeah, you just like click a button and then it pulls everything down rather than having to publish to it. I, I think it's good. My my really was you you didn't run a relay before. I I know Coracle doesn't run a relay, but I was expecting you to run a relay. <laughs> I've run a whole bunch of uh, relays thrown away. Thrown. I, I don't I don't run a persistent relay database. I I I run them. I hack on them and then I throw them away. You know, uh, things you need 24-7, like ideally, is uh, a Nostra Relay, a Lightning node, but you definitely don't need a Bitcoin node running. So, like, I feel like this is finally something useful for, for the Ubro uh, platform, which is a very cool one. How, how are you, how are you uh, bucking up your, your Lightning node without your Bitcoin node, though? <laughs> I, I use only centralized Lightning. Um, <laughs> 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 All right, so Project Spotlight. Uh, Vendata.io, a Nostra client to interact with data vending machines by Pablo. <laughs> <laughs> I was literally about to ask, like, is there like a UI for DVMs? That'd be really useful, but it seems like this is what this is. That's exactly what it is, yeah. So uh, uh, every person that was writing uh, DVMs, including myself, was just trying to write, just having to create scripts to <laughs> to send, to test them. Um, so I figured I might as well write a client. It's mostly targeted towards developers, like definitely end users can, can use it, but the target that I have in mind is, is developers to, to show what they do and what, like the kind of things, like the piping thing is super powerful, is super useful because you can do stuff like, like some people were building jobs based on my jobs. So for example, I would send whatever, uh, uh, create an image and then someone else would use my image as input and add like change this into whatever, uh, which is kind of cool. And yeah, like it's, it's, a, it's a fun little project. I, I wrote it last week, um, but yeah, I, I it's um, it's cool. Like you just see a feed of of all the jobs that have been sent, and you can create, you can is, is use the jobs as inputs, and you can explore the different DVMs that have done a NIP eighty nine announcement. So I then wrote a NIP eighty nine eighty nine tool to announce the the DVMs. But yeah, it's a, it's it's a it's a cool it's a it's a useful it's very useful. Like I I've been using it a lot lately. Nice. Uh, by the way, Vendetta sounds like Vendetta. That's the whole point. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's, it's on purpose. <laughs> I never no know with you anymore, okay? <laughs> Are you going to do Palmster? <laughs> oh, dude, I have to do Palmster. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, let's talk about Palmster. <laughs> Twitter, you might have missed on Noster. Pablo. <laughs> Yeah, this is the one I mentioned before. It's FOMOster. I, I don't know. I saw the domain. I was like, oh, yes, I need to. <laughs> like, I wrote the, this DVM that I was mentioning this morning uh, earlier, about, uh, the one that I wrote this morning. And then I thought, ah, it would be nice to have like a specific UI, like a specific website uh, where people can just one click. Uh, if it doesn't find an EPO 7, it actually generates um, <laughs> it generates a private key in the browser. So, so yeah, it's, uh, I don't know, FOMOster.com was available. I mean, I had to take it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like your uh, available domain-driven de development. That seems like a good way to go. <laughs> what could go wrong? <laughs> um, yeah, can, can you? Can you? I think Fumster has like a good solution for me. Can you like uh, essentially search the space for all the Bitcoin and Noster software updates and new projects? create show notes, and then like use uh, AI to imitate my voice from previous episodes and the guests too, and essentially make my pod where I don't have to be on the pod? Dude, actually- We're getting there. No, 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 no. We are so close to there. Last <laughs> night, someone, uh, the, uh, a, a guy, he, he, his name is Don't Believe the Hype, and he wrote the most number of DV DVMs. It's pretty amazing. Um, I think he's like the second most uh, popular contri or more frequent contributor to Amethyst. Um, and he's an actual AI researcher. <laughs> like, he actually knows what's going on in AI. And, and he sent me an audio saying uh pa pablo i'm so fucking bullshit with the voice of <laughs> with the voice of guy swan trained nice. in five seconds of guy swan's voice it's uncanny wow. it's in like you can tell that there's something uh, slightly off 
but it's impre- on like nothing. Hey, listen, it does. It could be just ten uh, percent as good. People will be happy, you know. Then like we don't have to worry about Elon's, you know, like a rug pulling my feet. <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm serious, man. It would be awesome. Actually, what I want to what I want to do with DVMs is I want to input ten different podcasts that I want to listen to have the the, uh, the transcription of the 10 podcast, give the 10 outputs of the, as the input of one summarization job, give me like, I don't know, 10 paragraphs of the most important ideas, and then create a, create a podcast based on the output of the summarization. And <laughs> I can just, okay, which one is interesting to me really? <laughs> um no i mean it'll be great uh you know it's like it's a lot less work for everybody zap goals a zap fundraiser for bitcoin donations for your goals launched zero x chat a new privacy focused chat app built on nostra protocol this one's uh it's good uh the guy's been working with us on the nip 24 stuff He's got good ideas and it's pretty smooth. I can't tell if I know somebody with that handle as well. Or maybe I just got confused. He goes by water, water 753 or something like that. Mm. Okay, I think somebody might have that uh, that handle somewhere. Anyways, Atomster. RSS, Atom Getaway uh, to Noster is live. It generates Noster profiles for each RSS feed and posts uh, new entries to give Nostra relays. That's awesome. Because it's also permissionless. <laughs> like even from the people who actually make the 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 content. The world's gonna get weird. <laughs> Vault, a free open source and decentralized password manager. Uh, I don't know how I feel about that. Are people storing their passwords on Nostra encrypted? That seems like a bad idea. <laughs> Sounds like a terrible idea. It has, uh, as far I haven't used it, but it has two runs of, uh, of encryption. So one is like just typical Nipple 4, and the other one is just like a symmetric uh, password based encryption. Yeah, but so here's the thing, right? Like, one of the best things you can do with secrets is never put them on the internet. <laughs> Even if you have triple, quadruple encryption, because you still have implementation problems. Anyways, uh, so so it's a new. One. Very cool that you're trying, sir. Whoever you are, but uh, jingles. I, don't put your passwords on the internet. W three dot do a free URL shortener web service enabled by Nostra Protocol. Yeah, this one I I actually don't like because it feels like the Nostra angle is is <laughs> it's, it's just recentralizing everything. No, no, no. It's it's yeah. it's literally just. The it's just using Nostra as a da- database, but th- there is like no, <laughs> there is no, no other Nostra angle than it's instead of storing it on a database locally, it's on, on a Nostra relay. I mean, ultimately, the problem with your sharpeners is that you're still like completely like you know, pants down towards DNS, so you know, you're still fucked. LMP or IMP, I can't quite tell. Uh, chat by Impervious. Impervious. Oh, Impervious is that uh, shitcoin uh, browser, right? It's not shitcoin. I mean, unless they changed something, but it was. Well, they had I a think token. It's mostly like, they were, what? It had a token? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they had oh, a token. Fuck. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, is that Impervious? No, that's Brave. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, Sorry. Wait. dude. Okay. Okay. It was Brave. Oof. Uh, so I. I looked into Impervious one time. I know a little yeah, bit about too. it. I think, I think, and as far as I understand, they were trying to do um, messaging over the Lightning Network. So, like, mm-hmm. somewhat similar to Commando, but they had a specific API for sending messages. So, I, I thought that was Zion. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's kind of like Sphinx in that sense. I don't know, but I, I, I didn't really see the point of it. Uh, Imchat does uh, does that uh, Keat? Does don't they do Keat? Or, or they use the same? They use Home Hole Punch to do uh, do they video that, chat that's or something new? I think so. I looked into it a while ago too. It seems really good, but it's moved kind of slowly. And uh, this uh, private group messaging thing is yet another standard uh, yep. because of the that bounty. I feel like Impervious sort of was the darling, like the promised darling, maybe two or three years ago, and it kind of never went anywhere. Like, listen, you know, browsers are like a ginormous amount of work that's completely inaudible that lives on web technology. So like, it's kind of like a hopeless endeavor in my view. 
I think it's just Chromium. Like the browser itself is just a, it's just a Chromium with some stuff built in, but I, I rather just have like you know like native clients that that do things more specifically instead of these general purpose nightmares that browsers are. Well, uh, that's why I love Nostra because I feel like it's the first time we can start building these applications, these native applications. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes. I, I know like there's a lot, we have a lot of web devs who are still building stuff on the web, but it's just, it feels legacy. Like we should, we, we have Nostra and we can start building apps like native apps on this new protocol. Like why not? We have a chance of killing JavaScript. <laughs> oh, that would be wonderful. Oh, man, please. <laughs> just don't make me learn Rust instead, please. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, it could have been, it could have been Go. It could have been, uh, what was it? Ruby was uh, huge at some point, too. Uh, Swift is quite the, nice the if you want to help out hack on Domus. Yeah. There, there is actually, there is actually uh, Cody from, um, from Fetty wrote a, wrote a DVM that translates all your code to, to Rust all the time. <laughs> like, <laughs> you, the promise is it's that it's going to help you solve bugs, but actually when it re responds, it shows you your code re-implemented with Rust and shilling Rust in the comments. That's <laughs> it's, hilarious. It's fucking nice. hilarious. <laughs> That's pretty cool, throw. Uh, by the way, uh, anybody uh, uh, who can write Holy C Temple OS is hiring. <laughs> Rip Terry. Uh, it's not a joke. I can write sake faults. There, that's a whole different sidebar. All right, Pulsar. Uh, Pulsar is a simple Nostra group chat app that aims to follow best practices to secure all of the data and metadata associated with the chat instance. Uh, big promise. Oh, that looks interesting. That you're using some of the right techniques. Yeah. Do you, Do you know about the project? No, I don't know about the project. I've I've learned a lot about group chat and encrypted chat over the last two weeks. Uh, <laughs> nice. But uh, the uh, fixed length, fixed frequency messages is um, that's a uh, that's something SimpleX does. See, I'm I'm wary about this because it's written by Super Testnet, and he did that thing where it leaked out oh, yeah. the key. <laughs> So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Spring, the Nostra browser for Android. First look. Do you guys know about this one? So can someone, can someone explain to me what this is? Because I, I keep seeing it, but I don't really understand what, the point, what it is for. No idea. Pablo probably knows. I haven't tried it, but I know that it, the, the idea is that it has your NSEC like the browser itself, and then has a just an Impulse 7 interface to, to all the um, tabs. So every time you go to an application, it keeps the state of the application. And I think the idea is that it's it's like, the, I, I think he's tr what, what Brookman is trying to do is sort of like a, like a portal to, to your Noster activity within like this application. And I, I know it's using NIP89 to find applications and like the recommendations and stuff like that. Um, yeah. I don't know. I use this. I, I, I like it. It's uh, it's the closest we've gotten to uh, making micro apps usable. Uh, you open up your browser and you want to do some something that's specific to or like that's supported better by a particular app. And you just like hit back and then open up that app. And uh, yeah, it's super easy. Oh, um, that's cool. So, yeah. And the key management is really transparent. You put your key in and there's no like browser pop-ups or anything like that with like Albi or, and you don't have to do Kiwi with like a Chrome extension. Uh, so it's a really good way to use web apps on uh, mobile. Yeah, on the other hand, that, that could be like Gitalvi just removing. Do you want to give permission to sign this, right? <laughs> so yeah, Gitalvi could yeah. also, I, I don't know, I, I want to be able to authorize things. Yeah, but you could add that into, into the browser pretty easy. Uh, Nos Nos Store does that, right? Like that's the. Mm -hmm. uh, it does work, uh, but it is scary because even though they're not like you know sharing the private key, they're also just asking for sort of like random permissions that are impossible to really tell what they're asking to sign. <laughs> <laughs> I think Apple did need to add um, libsecp into their enclave so that I can just use that. Did they? No, they should. That's, I'm oh, still waiting yeah. for that. Oh, you're cool. Oh, I mean, oh, they, yeah, cool. that, that's like... NVK almost had a heart, heart attack. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah, like, that'd be like... that. Like, I, I don't think people appreciate how big that would be. <laughs> because, so, think about it this way, right? Like, the, the, the phone stack can tell you that they don't see what your app is doing, but they can see everything your app is doing, right? Because you're in memory. And you can't really prove that the memory is encrypted, blah, 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 blah. So... 
essentially, like, since we assume the phone hardware and, and like, lower level OS can already see all your shit anyways, uh, having phone wallets, for example, sign Bitcoin transactions without writing a bunch of fucking JavaScript uh, serializing, deserializing, serializing, deserializing, serializing, deserializing the private key. <laughs> uh, just letting like at least the lower level OS do the signing of those transactions for phone wallet level amounts of money or ID would be huge for security, like huge. So, anyways, that's why I kind of like I got a, a I got I got a, like a, a an anticipated boner there that. Uh, <laughs> I wonder if they ever will. Like, they would have to fully embrace Bitcoin before they do. I guess. Uh, I don't know, man. Like, I, I think I think a few things are going to happen like sooner than we think. One of them is a, because like Bitcoin is becoming so disseminated, and there is like Bitcoin is probably like one of the first cryptography that a lot of devs are going to touch ever in their lives. A lot of applications are going to start using Bitcoin crypto primitives. Uh, for other things, so like it's not impossible that and and it's so good and so well maintained and so well reviewed, way better than most of the crypto libraries that are out there. Like, it's kind of huge to have something this secure available for free in an industry that charges a lot of money in licensing. I think I, th I think it'd be funny if uh, Nasher was the thing that pushed Apple to implement yes. SecP, <laughs> and then mm -hmm. so that's the one thing we could do for Bitcoiners. Yeah, but but there you go, right? I mean, like Schnorr and Frost and all that stuff that Nasser could support, like it, you know, is there too, right? So you you it's a fucking no brainer to integrate LibSecP. I mean, like it, it's a fantastic library. I'm actually doing an episode with the guys who wrote it uh, next week or the week after. It's it's a ginormous achievement, and I think Apple would would really benefit a lot from this. Anyways. Um, Amazon AWS, the KMS that they have, supports it. But I think they added, because I, I think Ethereum also supports, uh, it's the same curve, right? Yeah, Ethereum has the same curve, but they do a bunch of other stupid shit. So on the, the <laughs> blog post, because I was looking at signing Bitcoin transactions with, uh, with Amazon's KMS, um, a few years ago and on the blog post that they that they wrote introducing support for the curve was uh talking about ethereum there you go <laughs> well jeff bezos is a nasher user right yeah uh, it's true <laughs> he's been purple peeled <laughs> by cbd <laughs> I, I i really don't think there is a a library with a bigger bounty than libsecp <laughs> like I mean, it's a big bounty. What, what's it at <laughs> I mean, just just think about like I don't know, like let's say. Oh, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Yeah, breaking it. Fifty percent of all the Bitcoin is probably secured by it, right? Like anybody breaks it, we have a bigger problem. <laughs> you said? Did you say fifty? Yeah, probably half of the Bitcoin is well, like secured what's by the, What's the other half? Um, well, I'd say forty percent of the other half is is like older than Libsec and was never moved. Like the Chester thing. No, 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 no. There is like uh, there was like the old Bitcoin Core. Uh, I forgot the name now. Uh, the old way they were doing ECDSA, and then and then the other ten percent is all the new stuff. I think I can confidently say that like you know more than like probably like close to half of all Bitcoin is still like unmoved, or like if it was moved, it was moved. If all I mean, B BitGo probably uses it, right? So that's the fifty percent right there. <laughs> So this is the fun part. Like, I mean, Big O just announced they're doing Moosig 2, for example, now too, right? Because like everybody knows that MPC with ECDSA is idiotic now. Fireblocks got owned. ECDSA was never designed to do MPC. It's okay. That's a whole other thread. <laughs> uh, hyper nostalization. Apple allowed current to keep the zap button on posts. Yeah, so I could talk a bit about this. I'm please do, because uh, this is obviously uh, very important for Domus as well to have the notes apps back. Uh, from and from what we can tell, what they were able to do was um, sell Sats within their app for let's say like a dollar, and then and then basically at that point, Sats are treated as like an in-game currency, which you can then send to people. It's like this weird loophole, um, which apparently do Apple's you have fine to give thirty percent to Apple. 
on that yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. The idea is just like just to have that in there. But apparently that's enough. But like, it's not really clear if that was just a re- one one off review decision or if this is going to be reviewed again in the future. And there's also decision. There's also questions about like how legal it is for you to like sell. Do you have to become like a Bitcoin exchange at that point to sell? Um, sad. So, like, these are all questions that we're dealing with at Domus right now. Is like, does it even make sense for us to do this, or are we gonna, there's going to just be cause more issues in the future? But um, we'll see. We'll see where it goes. Yeah. No. I mean, like, listen, Apple is going to cave eventually. It's a matter of time. That happened to Bitcoin before. It's, it's going to suck for a while, but eventually they're going to have to. This this Apple hegemony on their on their like on the thirty percent on everything in their platform. It's like this shit's not going to stand forever. But what people don't realize is that like iOS users are the most qualified customers that there are. So like the majority of the money that that is made in phones and apps is made through the Apple platform that only has like what like 25 30% of all the market. So it's uh it's it's a market that everybody wants. That's why they they push so hard. Best of luck, Will. Yep. Yeah, but this is also why I'm building this Nostra DB stuff, which is like my native NDK, so that I can start building out like Note Deck and, and Domus Android because I don't want to be under the boot of, of Apple, you know, forever. Yep. Don't blame you. All right, uh, Nostrasia. Uh registration open. Uh, it, it's going to be awesome. Uh, I think most of us on the panel are going. Right? Are you guys all going? Yep. 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 Mm-hmm. There you go. So uh, the party, the, the traveling sisterhood of the Noster Pants continues to travel the world. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not wearing your pants. I'm not wearing Yet. pants. <laughs> um, <laughs> Touche. Um, so... <laughs> All right, uh, it's gonna be awesome, guys. Like, it's gonna be huge. I think we're planning for like a thousand people in Japan, Tokyo. Uh, I got my 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 hotel booked already and ticket booked too. So I'm going. Can't wait. Did anyone uh, else go into Bali beforehand? Or nope. Is there a Bali Nostra conference? There's a Bali Bitcoin conference that I'm going to. The thing that bef- it's just before Nostrasia. Cool. Uh, there's also the for the people who are in the US. The folks at uh, Bitcoin Park are running a Noster conference festival thing there. I think it's like a whole week of Noster things. I think it's uh, November. No- they're calling it. N- yeah, something. Yeah, no, something <laughs> Noster in November in it. Uh, they probably they're probably listening to Pablo too much. <laughs> So it's going to be pretty cool, guys. Like, I, I'm actually kind of like bummed out that I can't do both. The, the Bitcoin Park stuff is, is really awesome. I'm going to that as well. How are you doing both? I, they had to, they, I think they had to move the conference up <laughs> for me to make it. I don't know. It's weird. Okay. Pleblab introduces the Noster Dev course. Uh, in just eight hours, we'll guide you uh, from being a novice to becoming a proficient Noster developer, enabling you to create resilient, censorship-resistant, decentralized networks in eight hours. That's cool, though. It's nice to see courses for Noster development. I can't fucking believe we got to the end of this. <laughs> <laughs> I actually didn't think we would. Like that was that's an insane yeah. document. I know, right? Like I'm always amazed that like we often do uh, get to the bottom of it. Reads Noster Guide by Useless Shit. Amazing username, man. You win the internet. <laughs> Apple allowed current app to keep the zap button on. Oh, okay, that's on Apple News. The same post as the previous. Cool guys. Listen, thank you so much for uh, giving me two hours of your time. Uh, thank you, Elon, for only semi rugging us today, even though I'm paying you double Starlink price for preference. Guys, uh, anything we missed in terms of software updates or anything else? Not in terms of software updates, but uh, with OpenSets, we are 
putting together something for to help developers with their designs. So um, Carnage and Daniel are are leading the way. Um, so very soon, they're like very, very soon, there will be some resources for developers to to get help <laughs> uh, in making stuff that doesn't look like shit. Especially it doesn't not just doesn't look like shit, but doesn't work like shit. Uh, so starting to think in terms of UX and making products that are <laughs> easier to understand. And especially like Nostr, there is a bunch of, um, you know, like private keys and relays and stuff like that, that most people are not used to. And how to think about introducing those those elements into applications that are more for, for general audience. Um, I don't know. I, I'm very excited about this, about this because Carnage yes. has sort of been doing this for months, but in a, in a non-formal way. In a, yeah, I, I, I think making this more widely available to, to all developers is going to be very, very interesting. Yeah, I mean, like designers really, really need to learn how to talk to devs. Just think about it's like the opposite, <laughs> <laughs> talking opposites. And the same is true for devs to talk to designers, like learn how to communicate with people who think the literal opposite of you in terms of how to do things, because like we all gain from that. I almost forgot about that OpenSats initiative. It's not like I'm not in the chat. Uh. <laughs> uh, and I just want to say, you know, actually, because of OpenSats, I want to announce that Domus will actually be hiring its first person, um, and it's only possible due to OpenSats. So I want to say thanks, thanks to those, those guys, and um, hopefully, I, I can apply again in the future because I want to keep building out the Domus team. And I think no, open OpenSats, yeah, yeah, like guys, apply. Like seriously, like the, like we have all this jack bucks, and uh, and there is more bucks coming from other people too. Uh, like the goal is to like literally spend it all in shit that makes the world better and makes Nostra win and it makes Bitcoin win. So like apply, like come up with shit that is like solid and apply, right? Like don't, don't be afraid to apply. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I've been having a lot of these conversations because, uh, <laughs> a lot of people, think that they need to be like at the level of Deimos to, to apply or the, the level of Coracle to apply. And there is there is a lot of willingness to fund experimentation. Uh, there is a Absolutely. lot of experimentation that is possible in Nostar. Almost no one is doing it. So if you're interested in that kind of thing and you need the funds, don't think that because, oh, you're, you're not building like one formal client that you cannot apply. You can definitely apply and you should. Yeah, I mean, like the, like, the thing is, like, just try to align your monetary ask amount with, like, you know, like, with your proposal, right? Like, don't ask for some stupid amount, like, if you're planning on doing, like, a little thing, right? Like, so, like, try to just, like, make something honest, right? Like, it's like, oh, I'm, I'm working on this for this amount of hours, and, like, I, that's my plan, and here's the roadmap, and maybe there is an MVP, right? Like, if you already have, like, some stuff that's out there, it's a lot easier decision, yeah. right? If there is code for us to see. Like, if you've never written anything and nobody has ever, like, heard of you, like, it's harder for us to know that you can deliver what you claim you're going to do, right? You know, just, just, just try to be pragmatic about your proposals because, like, it's a lot easier to fund. What else? Uh, oh, yes. Uh, so BitcoinEvents.org has all these events. And Johnny has poured a lot of time into tracking all the conferences and all the events happening in Bitcoin and Oscar. So go there. What else? Um, any other things you guys want to show about your projects before we get to the end? You can listen to my podcast. Uh, did I talk about data vending machines? <laughs> Final <laughs> thoughts, Will. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in terms of my projects, like, I, I really think that this NostraDB thing is going to be really helpful for native clients. It's not just a Domus thing. Um, so I'm just trying to build the best. It's, it's, the idea is that it's like a SQLite for Nostr, uh, very embeddable, very easy to use, and it's going to handle all the complicated stuff like note parsing. It'll be able to, anyway. So it's, if you're interested in like low level, really fast optimization and like code like that, come help on NostraDB. It's uh, Domus, it's GitHub slash Domus dash IO slash NostraDB. Um, it's all in C, super fast. So if you're a C programmer, come help out. Um, yeah, and uh, hopefully I'll apply for a grant with that for that soon because it's actually a pretty big project. And um, yeah, so that, I'm really excited about this project I'm working on and I want other people to help me, so come join. 
amazing guys. Mr. Hodobod John. Final thoughts, sir. I uh, can't wait to see everyone in Nostrasia. Miami was uh, an amazing experience for me. I'm excited about all the stuff everyone's working on, uh, especially the small projects. So if you feel like you're not getting picked up by this podcast or anyone else, just keep going. Uh, eventually someone will notice you. And uh, yeah, so don't don't get discouraged. And um, it's a low level of commitment to to get something built. Uh, you know, you can build an MVP in a day and then now you have something and you can put it out there. So uh, just excited about that and excited to work on um, decentralized content moderation and like recommendations and stuff. Uh, we'll see whether uh, Pablo or I win the uh, the battle over DVMs versus NIP32. <laughs> <laughs> just a note on like if you're building small things and we haven't noticed you email us you know it's producer at .com. it's not that hard or send a fax <laughs> send a fax <laughs> uh, Will you, you were making a comment there oh yeah I just find it funny because you know uh, Corkle there you're, you're working on the labeling stuff and you got DVMs for you know algorithms and I'm actually working on Nostra script for that's my approach at it so there seems like there's lots of different approaches for this thing and it's really it's oh really shit cool. we didn't get to Nostra script fuck <laughs> okay, it's going to have to be a different episode. No, we did mention it. Yeah. We all win. We're all going to win. Pablo, any final thoughts? <laughs> yeah, so so I think in the past couple of months, I've noticed that the pace of releasing new things, uh, <laughs> the list doesn't show it, but it, it has slowed down a little bit. And But when I talk to developers, and I, I see this for myself as well, and I mean, just look at, look at Will, <laughs> the development is nothing but um, gaining momentum. It's just, I think, a lot of developers, <laughs> I know, I know, Hoddlebot, you, you also went back and basically refactored Coracle like a million times. I think we are transitioning from the a lot of proof of concepts uh, and a lot of ideas into okay let's go back and let's build like really solid um groundwork like like not through db i think it's an, a perfect example so yeah I'm, I'm just like very 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 bullshit very bullish on the um very bullshit on, on, yeah very very bullshit on on how we are I see a lot of Nostra developers that are putting their eye on, okay, how do we take this to, to the next level in terms of performance? And how do we make like real professional clients and relays and applications? So I don't know. I'm, I'm very, very excited about that. You know, um, I share the same bullshit as Pablo. But, but, you know, remember, right? Like people built a lot of the easier stuff early and a lot of the obvious stuff. And I think like a lot of people now are working on foundational things like the Nostra DB. You know, like at some point people need to put their heads down and sort of like build things that users don't necessarily see right away. It's part of the code that, right? Like, I mean, this is a new project. We built like sort of like the fast things that to, to bootstrap the whole the whole sort of momentum of this network. But uh, you know, a lot of people are now like heads down building the the harder, bigger things that you don't see the result right away. Well, a good example of this is actually, I, I honestly don't believe that Nostra would work in its current form if we didn't have stir fry. And that guy sat down and built the, the most performant piece of software I've ever, I've ever seen. I've, I've been looking at the code for a while now and it's stuff like that. Like we need stuff like that. And um, so yeah, that just goes to show like really important engineering work needs to happen if this thing's gonna work. That's right. And you need and if you need funding either part-time or full-time for stuff like that to actually, you know, say you have a lot of experience building performance software, right? Like and you're gonna go and be full-time working with Will on Nostra DB and Nostra DB is gonna be your baby too. Maybe that's something that you should apply, right? We need more people focused on the hard stuff. That's true for Bitcoin too. All right, folks, this was a pleasure. Uh, I think we we can close the save the nipples episode well. We covered a lot of a lot of stuff. I, I'm very grateful you guys were willing to spend as much time talking about all this shit. <laughs> I'm always surprised with that. I'll be doing a panel episode in a week or two. I can't remember now, uh, or less than that. I have absolutely no idea on my calendar about uh, censorship and just sort of like unwinding and and sort of breaking down the topic. Because it's not simple, and uh, and the different people want different things, but I really think that the discussion is what's gonna 
get us there. So uh, stay tuned for that. And also the Libsac 256 K1 episode with the folks who actually <laughs> worked on that, which is, like I mentioned, a absurd achievement. Also going to happen soon. And hopefully those episodes will be so dense that you will fall asleep. Uh, and if you don't, what the fuck is wrong with you? Is Greg going to be on that one? I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. No, not Greg. Oh, okay. No, I, I think Greg has sort of like, uh, sort of retired from Bitcoin. It seems that way. All right, guys. Thank you so much. It was awesome. Thanks. See you guys. Thanks, man. See you. Thanks for listening. For more resources, check the show notes. We put a lot of effort into them. And remember, we don't have a crystal ball. So let us know about your project. Visit bitcoin.review to find out how to get in touch. Mm-hmm.